please you uh, euro area bonds uh, to create a large and liquid uh, bond market uh, similar to the one of the United States. As a part of the deal on the six-pack between the European Parliament and the Council, the Commission expressed its readiness to produce an analysis of Eurobonds. This green paper now provides you with that analysis. The two key findings are the following. First, yes, jointly issued stability bonds would likely produce uh, substantial benefits uh, in terms of uh, reducing and uh, stabilizing borrowing costs of uh, member states, uh, in terms of uh, a better shock resi resilience uh, of the financial sector, and in terms of uh, improved uh, market efficiency over time. But uh, as common bonds uh, would reduce uh, direct uh, market discipline uh, of uh, individual member states. Uh, the introduction of uh, stability bonds uh, would uh, only be meaningful on the condition that uh, the euro area economic governance uh, were to be substantially further reinforced uh, and uh, strengthened. The six-pack uh, is uh, already a big step in this direction, and uh, today's uh, proposals uh, represent uh, a further major step uh, towards uh, strengthened uh, economic uh, governance. And uh, finally, on the basic approaches, uh, or say broad uh, generic approaches, uh, the Green Paper distinguishes uh, between three basic uh, generic uh, approaches. Uh, First, uh, a full approach uh, or a full replacement of uh, national bonds by common bonds uh, with uh, joint and several guarantees. Second, uh, a partial approach uh, or a partial replacement of uh, national bonds uh, by common bonds, uh, again with uh, joint and uh, several guarantees, uh, which is uh, usually referred to the so -called, uh, as the so-called uh, blue bond, uh, red bond uh, structure of uh, blue bonds uh, on the basis of uh, euro area joint and several guarantees uh, and uh, red bonds uh, beyond a certain limit of uh, public debt uh, based on uh, national guarantees, uh, the national uh, risk. And uh, the third approach is, uh, again, it's a partial approach, uh, a partial replacement of uh, national bonds uh, by common bonds uh, with uh, several but uh, not joint uh, guarantees. I want to make uh, a brief uh, nota bene who is, uh, for those who are not so initiated to, uh, to the nature of uh, bonds, uh, just to be clear. Joint and several guarantees uh, mean that uh, a creditor can turn to each guarantor for the whole amount uh, while a several guarantee means uh, that each guarantor is only responsible for a pro rata amount uh, or its, uh, own, of its own specific uh, uh, share. This is uh, the third model, several but not uh, joint uh, guarantees. So the approach based on uh, joint and several guarantees uh, would give the greatest uh, benefits uh, in terms of uh, enhancing financial stability, but would also require the most uh, far-reaching reforms of governance uh, to ensure that uh, fiscal prudence uh, prevails. These two first approaches would also most probably require an amendment uh, of the EU treaty, which uh, might take uh, some time. In any case, uh, a thorough political discussion will be needed, uh, as President Barroso said, uh, and uh, I trust also that it's it is going to be a very Cartesian and uh, analytical uh, discussion. And that's why we now launch uh, a wide consultation after we have uh, taken stock and uh, studied uh, the feedback uh, we could consider suggestions uh, on the most uh, appropriate uh, way forward. Last but not least, uh, I want to say the following. 
There is uh, no silver bullet uh, that gets us uh, out of the crisis. Uh, instead, uh, we need to work on uh, all relevant uh, fronts. Uh, the decisions of the Eurozone Summit in October do precisely that, uh, and uh, they are being currently implemented. Uh, today's proposals uh, build on the decisions uh, of the Eurozone Summit, uh, and uh, they provide a balanced uh, but uh, determined uh, roadmap uh, for substantially reinforced uh, economic uh, governance uh, accompanied uh, with uh, options uh, for stability bonds. So, in the broader discussion on economic governance, uh, I share the President's view that uh, the Commission has a particular vocation, the vocation to protect uh, the interests of uh, all Member States uh, of preserving the single market uh, and of making sure that uh, changes in economic governance are done in a transparent way, in a democratic way, in the community way. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President and Vice President. Let me just uh, remind you that you have the press materials for this important package outside, and the slides will also be made available later. We turn now to questions. Rolf Dieter Kause of German Television was the first to ask for the floor. Go ahead, ARD. Thank you very much. Mr. President, I wonder why you put forward such a proposal like Eurobonds, um, knowing that the most important partner for this is totally opposed to that. What's your aim? Do you want to corner the German Chancellor? Do you not believe her, that she, she means it serious? Do you want, want to put public pressure on Germany? And if I may, a second question, don't you feel that's a little bit ridiculous just to change the name of Eurobonds in such a euphemistic way? Do you really believe that this enhances any uh, kind of, of, of uh, improvement by whatever? whomever? First of all, I think um, the European Commission has some institutional duties not only rights and duties. They are in the treaties, and we all have to respect the treaties. And uh, what we are doing today is to put forward some ideas for public consultation. I think that consider this against any government or any member states, that, of course, is completely inappropriate. And it will be absolutely inappropriate to consider a debate, a serious debate, on very important issues as something against a specific member state. And you name, you name the member state the most important economy. So certainly our intention is not to go against anybody, and certainly not against the member state that is the biggest uh, economy in the euro area and in the European Union. But I believe we have not only the right, but the duty to produce sensible, rational, objective analysis of the issues that are now important for our debate. And this is exactly the case. We have promised to do it, and we are doing it with no polemic intention at all. And regarding uh, what you said, uh, mentioning absolute opposition, I absolutely don't agree that there is absolute opposition of any country. On the contrary, on my context, I get exactly the, the uh, opposite impression, that the idea of having stability bonds is making its way. And uh, if you look at the first comments made by uh, people from Germany, they are, in fact, most about the timing of the options we are now putting. I feel very encouraged when the reservations to commission ideas are about the timing. It means there is no opposition regarding the pr of principle. And I think nobody in the current situation should have oppositions of principle. We are trying to have a rational, reasonable, serious, intellectually and politically serious debate. We believe that this document does precisely that, and we encourage all parties now to tell their opinion. And by the way, I think it's quite instinct that some parties already expressed the opinion before knowing what our proposal was. 
our proposal was adopted just now, one hour before. So it is prudent to wait for the ideas and then to discuss them. And if some agree, great. If some don't agree, they have also the right. But frankly speaking, I don't think it is appropriate in our European Union, in respect of the prerogatives and duties of all the institutions, to say from the beginning that a debate should not be held. Some others think the debate should be held. Sometimes we also listen to ideas coming from member states that we absolutely don't agree. Some of them, in fact, have been extremely negative, increasing lack of confidence, creating confusion, and making things less credible. I could mention many initiatives put now unilaterally by member states without proper consultation. But the Commission has this duty to come with these proposals. In this case, they are not proposals, they are options. It's a green paper on the feasibility of stability bonds. And so I think it's only appropriate. And all people that are committed to the European Union, to the principles of democracy and openness, should now engage in a rational, reasonable, serious debate. Regarding the name, I think it's a good name, Stability Bonds. That is the name that we decided to put for our um, ideas. Other names are also important. I have nothing against the name Euro. But I think we have put this name Stability to make a difference from Project Bonds. This is the reason. It was not because of any other motive. As you know, the Commission has proposed in the multi-financial framework to create project bonds, specific bonds for projects, namely in infrastructure, with the European Investment Bank, by the way, also with the support of the IB. So to make the distinction between project bonds for concrete, specific um, projects and uh, bonds that are, in terms of the common issues of debt, we have decided to have two different names for the sake of clarity. I think it makes absolutely absolute sense to call them stability bonds. Thank you. Jorge Valero, in the next question. Right. Jorge Valero from the Spanish newspaper La Razón. Uh, concerning the regulation for countries under severe difficulties, uh, Considering the big impact that this decision could have in these countries, I would like to know more about the criteria that it will be used to, to, uh, to put a country under these circumstances. It will be the spreads, for example, in the secondary bond market. Second question, uh, having in mind the situation of uh, Spain uh, right now, uh, if this regulation will be in place, the Commission will put uh, Spain under this strict surveillance. Thank you. As regards uh, your question in relation to the criteria of, uh, of the second regulation, second uh, 136 uh, regulation, it says uh, in, the, in the articles of the, of the regulation that uh, this uh, assessment, uh, whether such uh, uh, enhanced uh, surveillance is uh, needed, uh, will be done by the European Commission in liaison with the European Central Bank. And the central criteria is, is the potential risk to financial stability, of course, in the country concerned, but especially as regards its potential spillover effects in the rest of the Eurozone and the rest of the European economy. It's deliberately it's uh, narrowed to issues of uh, financial stability in the first place uh, and its uh, potential impact on uh, economic uh, growth and, uh, and uh, employment. Uh, but at the same time, it is uh, not uh, specified uh, uh, further because uh, we cannot uh, ex ante know all potential situations uh, where we might uh, need to recommend uh, uh, such kind of uh, enhanced uh, surveillance. As regards uh, the policies of uh, fiscal consolidation and uh, structural reform of uh, Spain to which you referred to, they are 
on track. Uh, Spain has uh, taken uh, very significant uh, decisions.